Hello, I'm at Tubo Church and I'm so excited to be bringing God's word to you today. Hey, today is Friday, praise God. And we're in the month of May. Listen to me. God is doing spectacular things this month and I don't want you to miss it. I told you, this is the month you should pray. Pray, pray this month, pray. There is an alignment. The Lord is saying it is time. Praise God. So there is an alignment that is taking place. Zion is shining forth. Are you ready to call forth your daily bread? Come on, let's do that quickly. Let's do that quickly. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Father. Great things are happening in our midst. Great things are happening in our lives. Thank you. Thank you for the blessing coming out of Zion for us. We receive every one of it, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Oh, glory, 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 glory. I read the scripture to you yesterday and I want to read it again. Now, I want to start from verse 1, Psalm 134, from verse 1. It says, Behold, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night, who by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Bless the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth bless you from Zion. Kaya basu hmm. Many years ago, this word came to me many, many years ago. And that's when I began to realize there is actually the blessing from Zion. And it's not the same with the blessing of this world. And I began to tell myself then, I said, that's the blessing I want. I want to be sure that everything I get is given to me by God. Out of Zion. See that now? You may have skills. You may be wise. You may be good at what you do. And then you get paid for it. Brothers and sisters, it's not the perfection of blessing yet. It is unrighteous, mama. And your desire as a child of God must be that you begin to receive the blessing that comes from Zion. And I'll tell you why. If you begin to receive the blessing that comes from Zion, this is what happens to you. It's an everlasting Hayana Bukusaria. It's an everlasting blessing. Not only for you, it goes beyond you to your children, to your children's children. Yeah. But the blessing that is from this world can just last that long. And someone can spoil it. But that which is from Zion, the moment God begins to bless you from Zion, number one, it means he is pleased with you. And the moment God is pleased with you, you see, God is thinking from eternity. And that's, that's the thing about God. When God says, I want to do something for you, he's not looking at your lifespan. He's looking at eternity. God is always looking at how, what he does in your life. You can pull uh, a, a, what's it called now? You can pull a rope from that point to meet him. Meet him where? In eternity. In eternity. So everything God wants to do in your life, he's not just speaking of you. He's not just speaking of your time. He's speaking of an eternal stuff. So when God decides to bless you from Zion, it means he has chosen you. Not only you. Yeah. Now, it will take great effort to spoil that blessing. 
See that now? So, I was explaining this earlier in the week. If you don't learn what to do with unrighteous mammon, and I explain what unrighteous mammon. Unrighteous mammon is every money you make from this world, whether it be from business, from salary, from whatever it is. Every money you make by transactions on this world, on this earth. Now, good, bad, as long as it's something you call a profit from this earth, something you transacted for, either you did a job and you were paid, whatever it is, it's called unrighteous mama. Unrighteous mama simply means money that is earthly. Money that is earthly. So it's not talking about, oh, somebody stole money, so it's unrighteous. No, no, no. Every money that is earthly, every money that is of this world, every money that comes from this world is unrighteous. And so the one God is going to bless you, where does it come from? You understand. Understand the difference. It's still money, because what God is going to bless you with is still money. And things, physical things now. That's what, what we're talking about. Now, you know, you know, sometimes, sometimes you hear people say, why do you speak on earthly things? Why do you always talk about God's blessing with car, money, and things like that? What about more important things like righteousness, holiness, and all those things? Hey, don't be deceived. The end result of all that righteousness blessing is physical things. Yeah. Now, religious people want to think, oh, I don't, hey. God said, if you obey me and follow me, I will bless your bread and your water. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. The blessing of God. Yeah. Now, all the spiritual gifts we walk in, all the fruit of the Spirit that the Holy Spirit is perf perfecting in us is to bring us to that place where the physical blessings will come to us. Now, here's the difference. And, and this, is, this is very important. The joy in the physical blessings, the joy of a car, the joy of a house, the joy of all those physical things, is not that you have them. It is how you got them. And that's the difference. So someone labors for them. Someone trick others for them. Someone did anything he had to do to get them. But you walked by God's principles, trusting the Lord day by day, looking up to Him. And while you're looking up to Him, He is changing things about your life. You see that now? He's, he's bringing you to that place of righteousness where all you see is Him. Then He begins to make your life comfortable. By giving you all those things that people, even Jesus said it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. What's the end result? No. What's the end result? You shall go to heaven. No. He says all these things. Which things? Everything the Gentiles seek. The difference now is it shall be added it shall be given to you. Their, theirs, they went to get it. Yours, it shall be given to you. Now, did you see the difference? So don't let people cheat you by telling you, hey, don't, don't, don't follow all those pastors that are always preaching about. Now, I understand where they are coming from. I understand what they are trying to communicate. But don't take out the truth in your trying to preach holiness 
You see that now? They said, these are things we need to understand. Now I was told people, it's just a thin line. And the thin line there is not something you see physically. It, it dwells in your heart. Praise God. It dwells in your heart. If you follow the Lord, he will give you things. Now you don't follow the Lord so that you will get things. If, if that you, is, becomes your focus, then you'll become impatient. But you see, the adventure of following the Lord itself is enough motivation to continue working with you if you really know what you're doing. But then, while you're following him, things will be added to you. And here's the point. You will, you will get to that point where you have a lot of things, but you don't even realize. You don't. Because see, you never come to that point where you think, I have a lot of things. So, ah, I have enough cars that will last me a lifetime. All these cars, even if I use them 10, 10 years, I have 20 cars. But what am I doing with 20 cars? You know, so you get to that point where, like, okay, what am I doing with five cars? Okay, let me give out one. Or let me give out two. And then you give out the two. And then you're causing trouble for yourself. Because now, you see, because those cars were given to you by God. <laughs> it becomes a problem. So now you feel, I want to give them out. And then you give them out. Now, because those cars themselves are carrying in them the DNA of God. The moment you release them out, the process of giving and receiving is activated. So more comes to you. So you say, ah, I have two cars, they are too much. I want to give out two. So you give out the two. The next thing, in one month, five other cars come to you. Man. So what am I going to do? You see, listen to me. <laughs> Didn't God say, bring you all the tithe into the storehouse so that they will me? He said, prove me now, now here. With, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to contain it. Didn't he say that? What do you think he was talking about? Spiritual things? So, so now you get to that point where you say, you know what? <sighs> Let me just walk with God as he's leading me. If God thinks 20 cars is what belong to me, how, you just get there and say, Lord, these cars are plenty. Oh, please tell me what to do with them. Because any process you any initiate by yourself, you're causing more trouble for yourself. Yeah. Why? Because you are now functioning in the realm of true riches. That's what David meant when he says, the Lord bless you from Zion. Now, when you begin to have... Um, Unrighteous mama, you walk, what's the money for? It is a training ground to receive what is heavenly. It's a training ground to receive true riches. But lots of people are still finding it difficult handling unrighteous mama. Jesus said, what you do with it is to make friends with it. How do you make friends with a righteous mama? Give. Give. And must I give everything you have? <laughs> I warn you, you will get to that point. Why? Because you've got to first get to that place where you establish with yourself that God takes care of. Now, it, it's something that must be established in your heart. God takes care of me. It's not my job, what I get paid that takes care of me. It's not what I get from my business that takes care of me. God 
takes care of me. So now you begin to trust him. Lord, see, how do you start trusting him? I'll tell you. First, be faithful with your tithing. And that's how, why I've always told you when it comes to tithing, don't just give it anyhow. Ask him. He's the owner. Lord, what would you have me do with it? Because that's where your journey begins in prosperity. And from tithing, he begins to tell you more. He begins to tell you more. He begins to tell you more. He tells you, take this. Lord, I want to tithe. Here's your money. What do I do with it? And he tells you, give it to Susan. So, oh, thank you, sir. So now you're thinking, oh, okay, now I'm going to say, son, I don't want you to touch your salary this month. Hmm? What should I do? I want you to give it to so and so. How much? Everything. Lord, how am I going to? Didn't I say I'll take care of you? <laughs> Lord, I trust you. Say yes, trust me. And then in faith, not in doubt. You obey the Lord. Now, I didn't say pastor told you. I said, you, you're having this dealing with the Lord. As long as you're a child of God, you will get there. Okay, Lord, I obey. And, I, and you do it cheerfully. You don't do it grud grudgingly. Oh, God, this month I've planned. And I'm going to do this. This month I've said, I'm going to buy this. I've already told them that I'm coming. Now, ah, 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 ah. you do it cheerfully. Lord, I trust you. I know you have greater plans for me. So I believe you. Now, what are you doing? You are showing faithfulness with unrighteous mama. That's what you're doing. Then, suddenly, someone shows up and says, Hey, the Lord spoke to me that henceforth, I should take responsibility for your children's school fees. Like, really? Yeah. So please, just in case I forget, can you be sending me the bill every time it needs to be paid? So why did I told you God told me? And you think, well, it's not like I don't have money to pay. My job can take care of that. Well, God spoke to me and I have to obey God. Okay, sir. Thank you. God bless you. And that's it. Now, what has happened? True riches is beginning to come. Now you are beginning to realize, because you get to that point where you said, what do I really do with my money? See that now? What do you think is going on? God is moving you from unrighteous mammon to the place of true riches. And it will keep walking like that. Then he will keep increasing you and increasing you, and increasing you, praise God. What's going on? He's blessing you from Zion. And you know what? They say, that's why your children are going to be intelligent. Because now, higher Kamali Kebo. Sometimes we will talk about this, and people just think it's, you know, uh, must you, you know. You know, sometimes people... <laughs> See, when you are sure that God is involved in something, you are sure that the outcome of that thing is going to be great. Now, that's the point. If God begins to pay your children's school fees, I am not going to pay this year. You just know automatically that, you see those children, they have been taken over by God. That's what it means. Go and sleep. Of course, do your work with them. You know what I but don't worry. So when I say go and sleep, I don't say go and sleep. Let them anything they want to become. It means never worry concerning them. Oh Father, thank you. Your blessing is coming to us out of Zion this month. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone watching me right now, let the hand of the Lord rest upon you and let God bless you out of Zion. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Have the best weekend ever. God bless you. Bye.